This is a, a topic that always gets some very passionate responses. Well, good afternoon, everybody out there on the interweb. This is Cruise Man on another gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. No wind. I can't believe it. It is about oh, 85 degrees, 88 degrees, something like that. Let's see, my temperature gauge is coming down a little bit. 89 degrees, no wind, no rain. We've had some rain this week. We've had 10 inches more rain than uh, our average for this time of year here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We've had a ton of rain this year. So, if this is your first time watching one of my motor vlogs, I'd like to, I'm trying to get rid of the spider. Damn, we must have built a damn web here. Anyway, <clears throat> if this is your first, <laughs> now he's on my pants. I think I got him that time. <laughs> wow. So if this is your first time uh, watching uh, my motor vlogs, welcome to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it if you take a second to click that little subscribe button down below. And if you click the bell, you know the drill. YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. So I am uh, just out for a little ride today. Got a couple of errands to run. Perfect day to ride. So thought I would uh, check in with you. Let you know some of the news. We started this last week a new uh, Facebook group. We already have a Facebook group specifically for Honda Goldwing maintenance. And that's for any year model Goldwing. And I decided to start another group, a new group, for those of you that own a 2018 to 2020 Honda Goldwing, strictly dealing with maintenance issues. So it's primarily for those of you that own my maintenance videos, but you don't have to own my videos to uh, join the group. And it's uh, a place where you can post uh, questions or help other people that are having issues with maintenance uh, items on their 2018 to 2020 Goldwing. Now I'll put the link uh, on the video and I'll also put it in the description field of this video so you can uh, link over there and join it. Obviously it's free and uh, you're more than welcome to join and join in on the discussions. We appreciate your participation. It's just a, an easy way for us to help you, you know, help communicate with the people that have my videos or anybody that has maintenance questions. Just kind of a support forum, you might say. I also uh, yesterday released my Garmin trip planner video showing how you can create custom routes and trips using the built-in trip planner. Uh, I'm showing it on my Garmin uh, Zumo XT, but uh, the Trip Planner app is available on several of the Garmin models, so I'm sure the same information would apply to those as well. And uh, if you have a Garmin Zumo, you might find that video kind of interesting, so check that out. But I promised you that we were going to talk about tires, and you know the great tire debate rages on it's not like there's any shortage of uh, videos out there or goldwing forum posts talking about what tires are the best and what tires to use so just as i'm editing this video i see that memphis mike just put out a new video talking about this same topic comparing Bridgestones to Dunlops. So you might want to check out Memphis Mike's channel as well and watch that video when you're finished watching this video. We're just going to talk about tire stuff in general on this video. I'd be curious to know, for those of you, regardless of the motorcycle you ride, what kind of mileage are you getting out of your tires? 
so if you put that in the comments down below I don't you know make sure you tell me what kind of motorcycle you have if you have a Goldwing what year model or if you have a Harley or BMW or whatever but I'd be real curious to know uh, how long do you uh, or do your tires last how many miles do you get out of your tires I typically get about 10 to 11,000 miles out of mine now I think my tire life is better on this 2018 Goldwing than it was on my previous Goldwings. And I'm not sure if that's because of the steering geometry is better, but even when I replaced the tires on this Goldwing, they looked to me like I could have easily gotten an extra couple of thousand miles out of them. So I'm wondering if I didn't replace them a little too soon. Because I know on my previous Goldwings, the tires, even though they still had tread life, uh, the bike would start running pretty rough because they, you know, they got some cupping on the front tires, and that doesn't seem to be as big an issue on this Goldwing. So just put in the comments down below what kind of mileage you got. I know some of you guys say you're getting 15 or 16,000 miles out of a set of tires, and I've never kept a set of tires that long. But, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I need to think about it. I don't know. I also run, uh, have always run 41 uh, PSI in the front and the rear tire. But I think I'm changing on that. I think I'm going to start running 38 in the front and 41 in the rear on this Goldwing. So, you know, let me know in the comments what tire pressure do you maintain uh, in your bike. Now the next thing is, if you get a puncture in your tire, do you uh, plug that tire and continue to ride on it, or do you just go ahead and replace it? My general rule of thumb has always been, if I get a nail in a tire, I will usually plug it and then uh, immediately get it you know order a new tire to replace it I don't usually ride on a plug tire unless I have to to get it to a dealer to get it replaced now I have plugged tires in the past using a rope plug the sticky rope that's the only one I've really ever been able to get to work I tried the mushroom plugs I never could get them to work right but the sticky ropes I have been able to get to work uh, pretty reliably and there was one tire I think I had only had like a couple thousand miles on it when I got a big nail in it but it was right in the center of the rear tire so I plugged it using a sticky rope and I think I rode that on that tire about another five or six thousand miles before I replaced it with no problem it never leaked never had a problem um, but I only rode locally. I wasn't taking a big road trip or a highway trip. If I was gonna get on the road, I don't think I'd get on a road trip with a plug tire. I wouldn't risk that. But what are your thoughts on that? Do you, if you plug a tire, do you continue to ride on it? Or do you just go ahead and replace the tire? Be anxious to know your thoughts on that too. And then I guess the next topic is what brand of tire do you use? Now, to my knowledge, there's only two manufacturers making tires specifically for the 2018 and 2000, up to, or through 2020 Goldwing, and that is Bridgestone and Dunlop. And my motorcycle came from the factory with Dunlop tires, but when it came time to replace them, I put on a set of Bridgestones because I've been using Bridgestones for years. My first Goldwing, which was a 2005, had Dunlop tires on it. And I remember one of the first few times I rode the bike, I took off from a stop sign and the street was a little bit wet. And I took off from the stop sign and that rear tire broke loose and I thought I was gonna lose control of the bike. So from then on, uh, I have, ridden with Bridgestones and I've always been very very pleased with the grip and the longevity and the uh, smoothness of Bridgestone tires now everybody has their favorite tire brand I know if you ride the older model Goldwing 
or other motorcycles you've got more choices you got Avon and Michelin and some various uh, tire brands so put it in the comments down below what are your favorite tires what brand do you prefer or do you just buy the one that you can get the best deal on at the time like I say I'm a Bridgestone bigot so I've always ridden on Bridgestone and uh, continue to this day in fact I just ordered a brand new set the other day uh, to put on this bike I know some guys that if they get a flat or if they get a puncture, they'll use something like slime or one of these liquid uh, tire sealants. Uh, I'm just not a real fan of that. I'm always afraid of what it's going to do to the inside of the rim, uh, maybe cause corrosion or other issues. But, you know, again, what what has your experience been? Have you ever used a uh, tire sealant? Uh, in an emergency situation to patch a tire to get you down the road be curious to know I've never used one I've always uh, used uh, just a plug now I have also used Dyna beads for tire balancing I know some of you guys use Centromatics uh, wheel balancers uh, I have not, never used Centromatics I've heard good things about them I know a lot of you are big fans of Centromatics but I have used the Dyna beads, and I know I've heard people say they chew up the inside of the tire, but I've never seen that. I've never had a problem with it. And I've always felt like they give me a smoother ride because as the tire wears over time, I don't think it's balanced as well after 5,000 miles as it was the day they put the tires on because the shape of the tire has changed. But with Dyna beads, it's a dynamic balancing. It's always balancing no matter what the tire shape is or the wear of the tire. And I've just always had good luck with them. And Dyna beads is not a sponsor. So just so you know, I just am a kind of a believer in them. I think they work great. And of course, the elephant in the room, you can't talk about tires unless you talk about dark siding and I know this is a, a topic that always gets some very passionate responses pro or con now I've done motor vlogs in the past where I talk about my thoughts on dark siding and I have some friends that are firm believers in using a car tire especially on the rear of the motorcycle mostly I think they use the car tire on the rear they may change out the front tire with a bigger front tire but I believe it's a bigger motorcycle tire and I think they call that double dark siding now, I have never ridden a bike dark side I've never ridden a bike with a car tire in the, as a rear tire I don't have a really strong opinion on this subject one way or the other. I'm not going to be one to say you should never do it. That said, I understand the arguments for and against it. Now the arguments for it is it may provide better braking, uh, it may be a run flat tire so if you did get a puncture in your rear tire you're less likely to lose control of the bike because it's a very low profile car tire the other uh, arguments are it's obviously much cheaper because the tire itself might only be around a hundred dollars and the tire will last you know maybe 30,000 miles or more compared to a motorcycle tire which may only last 10 or 12,000 miles so there's a tremendous cost savings to dark siding and those of you who rack up tons of highway miles uh, you notice that right away some people say they ride better I don't know I, I have no personal experience with it but I also understand the arguments against dark siding obviously one argument is because of the profile of the tire being flat with sidewalls 
the tire is not curved, therefore it's not designed to be leaned into a curve. A car tire remains flat in a turn. It does not, it does not lean over onto the sidewall. So you're putting, uh, the argument is you're placing stress on that sidewall of that car tire when you go into a turn that it wasn't designed to handle. That's a fair argument. I've also seen evidence from some people to suggest that the bead of a car tire is slightly different than the bead on a motorcycle tire. And therefore, when you mount it to the motorcycle rim, it does not seal the same as a motorcycle tire. I'm just telling you what I've heard and what I've read. And of course, the other argument is that the tire is simply not recommended for use on a motorcycle. And if you had an accident or something like that, you might actually not be covered by insurance or there could be legal uh, problems. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not sure if you had an accident on a motorcycle, the insurance person would even notice what kind of tire you had. But, you know, that's one of the arguments against it. The other argument against it is it's very hard to find a place that will install the tire on a motorcycle rim. Most Honda dealers I know of will not install a car tire on a Goldwing rim. So you probably either have to do it yourself or you have to go somewhere where you can find somebody that will install that tire on that rim for you. And there could be liability issues on their part. I don't know. Like I say, I don't really have a strong opinion personally. Uh, my attitude has always been, if you want to put a car tire on your motorcycle, go for it. I don't see how it's possible that a tire designed to go on a car can handle as well as a tire designed for a motorcycle because the tires are engineered specifically for motorcycles. They have different rubber compounds. They have a different design. And I just, uh, you know, to me, it just doesn't seem like it would handle as well. Now, if you're just doing flat, flat interstates, uh, I don't think it'd probably make any difference. But if you're uh, going through the canyons and carving the canyons at high speed, with a lot of turns and a lot of leaning. I don't know. Just does not seem like the tire would perform as well under those conditions as it would on a flat straight road. So again, I'm welcoming your thoughts. I know a lot of you guys are dark siders. I know you're gonna put in your two cents worth and talk about how it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let me ask you a question. Have any of you gone to the dark side and then gone back where you tried the car tire, didn't like it, and went back to the motorcycle tire. I'd just be curious to know. So anyway, that's the great tire debate. That's about everything there is to say about it. I always welcome your comments, your questions. I'll answer what I can. Put them in the comments down below. And that's about it today on Cruise Man's Motovlogs. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.